I have seen a lot of different scanners showing up on the market lately, so I'm excited to check out this new Xtool IP508S scanner that offers four system diagnostics, nine reset functions, and up to eight live data point graphing capabilities. Let's check it out. So as we can see, it's going to be one of these handheld type of tablet uh, scanners, which I like. They usually have a touch screen and very easy to use. So we get our packing list, so that's what comes included with it. And of course we have the quick start guide, so you have your user manual QR code here, and then it just tells you how to turn it on, how to plug it in, where to find the OBD2 port and things like that. And on the back here it talks about the updates, so you're going to have to update your device in order for all of the software to show up, which is very usual for a lot of these scanners. I know some people have freaked out when they get the scanner, they go to... Uh, there's software and there's nothing there. You just have to hit update and then it downloads everything for you. And this does have free updates for life, which is pretty cool. And of course you can update over Wi-Fi. And it tells you how to print reports and change the language and things like that. Very nice. It's also nice to see that you get an actual wall charger. It seems like a lot of these scanners don't actually include one anymore. You also have USB to USB cable. And obviously you have your OBD2 to the scanner. Uh, cable and looks like that's about it other than the actual scanner. So let's check that out All right, and here is the actual scanner. So as we can see it has a five inch display here very nice rubberized ergonomic type uh, Sides right here. So it's easy to hold in your hand and you can kind of still work with your thumbs All right, what do we have at the top? Well, we have the USB cable here. We have looks like a power plug right here So that's the 12 volts or you can probably charge it with the USB and then of course you have your port for the OBD2 and the power button. On the back here you just have a little bit of information, nothing on the bottom. But yeah, that's basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and update all of the software and then go down to the car and see what it can do. With all of the software updated, it's now time to talk about its features. And one thing I did want to mention about the updates is that they were quick. So usually it takes about an hour for other scanners that I have tested to run all of the updates because there's a lot of downloading and the downloads usually seem kind of slow. On this device it was downloading like 3 to 4 megabytes per second which was pretty awesome to see. So they're using some good uh, servers or maybe they're more local to me uh, in Chicago. So anyway, looking at this device once it started we have a kind of Android looking menu here at the bottom. And of course we have different functionality all over the screen. So let's check out some of the less exciting stuff first just to get it out of the way and then we'll jump into the diagnostics. So here on the left at the bottom we have our screenshot uh, uh, button. So if you press the button it just takes a screenshot. You have volume down and volume up. So volume up, volume down. It just pops up so you can change the settings or you can mute it as well. You have your back button right here and it usually will pop up here in the left top corner as well. You have your current running apps. So if you press this button right here, it'll show you the current running apps and you can switch in between them like you would on a normal Android device. You also have your home button. So this will take you to the Android home and you have this uh, car diagnostics button basically that will take you back to this X tool app. Okay, so if we do go back to the Android uh, screen, you have a few things. So you can actually explore the files on this device. You have your Chrome, so you can go on the internet. Of course, you have to connect to Wi-Fi. You have your gallery, so that's where your screenshots and stuff like that will go. The ones that we, the one that we just took, it's right there. And then, of course, you have settings, so you can go in and you will have to connect your networks, or you connect your Wi-Fi and all kinds of different stuff that you may need to connect. You can connect Bluetooth devices, so if you want to have a mouse or keyboard and things like that, you can do so. We can see we're only using 56% of the storage. But yes, yeah, so we have some system information and system settings you can adjust in here. Okay, going back actually to the Xtool software, uh, we have more settings here. So these are more simplified, I guess, for the app itself. And here are all the languages that are available. Pretty, pretty good extensive list of languages. We can switch from metric to, let's say, US units. You can enter your workshop information. So this will show up in the reports. So those are all the settings, but we also have this button right here for updates. Obviously, I just updated it, so there's going to be nothing to update, but basically it goes in here, checks the internet, and then it tells you if there's anything to update to start with. The first time you'll have to download basically all of the software 
from scratch. So that may take a little bit longer, but otherwise it's pretty quick. We can see our reports on this button right here. So after we run some diagnostics, we can save the report to this location. You also have remote control, which is basically team viewers. So you can have support connect to your device, or you can have somebody else like a different technician, if you like, connect to your device and help you troubleshoot. Anyway, let's start on the actual functionality of this device. You have kind of two options here to start. So you have auto scan which will automatically scan the VIN number and then find the make of the car and then do that for you. Or you can go to diagnosis and do that manually. We'll just do auto scan because I think that's going to be easier for us. And of course, this does have standard OBD2 functionality as well. So you can do EVAP testing and IM readiness to see if the car will pass emissions and things like that. But what we're going to do now is actually, it just as you saw, I just identified my car properly, which was cool. But I want to actually look at the force system diagnostics that this can do, because I think that's more uh, interesting, right? So first option on the left here is automatic diagnosis. So we'll scan all of the modules that it supports or all of the system that it supports and show you all of the modules or we can do system diagnostics. So we'll do automatic diagnosis first. We're gonna, well, wow, that was quick, okay, it's done already. So obviously this is an electric car, so you may not see all of the systems you would normally see because this device actually supports engine, transmission, ABS, and SRS. Uh, systems and all of the modules within those systems, right? So here we have the engine system, we have the dynamic stability, and we have the crash safety module, which is going to be our um, SRS. Uh, so we have SRS, ABS, and DME, which is the engine, but obviously no transmission because this car doesn't have a transmission. And here at the bottom, we have our DTC report, so we can see all of the codes that have showed up or we can just clear, clear all of the codes and then they will all disappear but before we clear all of the codes let's just go to diagnosis for here for the first uh, module right there and we have some information for the actual module so that tells us what it is serial number and everything else so you can read the fault codes if you like and of course if there are any you can clear those but what you can also do is read live data and this will be module and vehicle specific data not what you see over normal obd2 PIDs. So this is very, very important. This device is very fast. This is much faster than a lot of the uh, diagnostics tools I have used lately. And as you can see, we can have pretty good information here. A lot of the stuff is showing up and it's quick. It scans so quick. So I think that has something to do with the hardware that they're using. You know, this uses a quad core CPU and has a decent amount of RAM. And it's, it's modern hardware basically, so it's quick to communicate with the vehicle. But what we can do here is we can actually select all of these items. So if we do, well, let's select all of them. Let's do like eight. Yeah, let's do that. And we're gonna go graph so we can display all of them. And there you go, you have all of this stuff that's being graphed on your display. That's pretty cool because not a lot of scanners can do more than two or three. So yeah, you can see all eight are being um, scan right here. So let me press the accelerate pedal. There you go. So it reacts very quickly. It's very quick. It's within, I don't know, less than a second, definitely. And it seems instant to me, at least to my eye. So yeah, we have all the whole sensors showing everything. Obviously the temperature and stuff like that is not going to be changing because I'm not driving the vehicle. But yeah, this is very nice. A lot more advanced, I would say, than most scanners when it comes to this information. But what else can we do in here? So we can graph. What if we can combine them? Yeah, so we can combine all of these things into one graph. So we have all eight graphed in one. We can zoom in. We can zoom in on the x-axis, on the y-axis. Pretty cool. I haven't seen this in a lot of scanners. So yeah, very nice. And you have all of the information showed at the top as well. Bring a little bit closer, maybe that's easier to see. And we can also export this data. So this will go into a CSV, uh, basically Excel file. And you have all of this data. So data export. Okay, and then we've finished the collection and we're gonna save it. Yeah, very cool. I'm impressed with the, the reporting capabilities and the graphing capabilities of this scanner. Uh, what else do we have? We also have a uh, read freeze frame. So if your car had some em emission issues, you can see that information saved in there. But yeah, let me show you how to clear codes. So obviously if you go in here for the dynamic stability control, we can go to read codes and see what that actually is. Okay, it looks like the roller brake tester mode activated. I did some donuts in the snow, so that might be why. We're going to clear that code. Okay, took just a second. Read codes and done. Very quick. Let's see what kind of stuff we can read on this module. And as you can see, there is a lot. So not only can it read it for the, obviously for the engine module, it can do it for all of these 
uh, other modules that it supports as well. Like I said, it's only four systems, but if that's what you need, this does well and it works well. So if we do everything ungrouped, did you see how quick it loaded all of those values? 31 PIDs loaded in what, like three seconds? Usually I have to speed up this footage here or you know cut in order to show you that, but that was quick. <laughs> We can graph it, we can combine them, we can export the data, we can record it. So now you can, you're can you basically screen recording, so we can go back and forth, right, when the stuff is changing. Obviously, it's not changing right now, but if it were to be changing, you can see that in the recording later on. And you can expand it for a quick graph on that specific item, basically anywhere on the unit. And you can even change the prompt to select minimum and maximum values, so you'll have more detailed view. To summarize, it will do for system scanning, it does really good uh, graphing for those systems, but you know, as a negative, it does only do for systems. You will not be able to do like retractable rooftop or something like that on, on cars. But for the money, this is fairly inexpensive. It's under $200 right now. That's pretty good. I'm impressed with that so far. So yeah, we're gonna exit out of automatic scanner and see what system diagnostics is. And basically it's the same thing that this previous uh, menu is, except it's manual. So you would go in, and you can see what actual uh, systems are supported on this vehicle by this device. And now we're gonna go see what else we can do with the special functions. So the second part of this device is that it can actually do nine special functions. And of course we can see those functions right here and support will of course depend on your vehicle. So just to go over quickly some of these functions, obviously the first one right here is the TPMS. So this will reset the tire sensors and pull out the ID so you can perform like relearn procedures after tire sensors are replaced. It will not program sensors, but it can do the relearn. You also have the SAS. That's gonna allow you to clear the fault steering angle sensor memories, perform resets for the uh, steering angle and turn off the warning light. You also have the oil reset. That's pretty clear. When you change the oil, you need to reset the light in the car. You also have EPB, it's gonna be electronic parking brake. So if you need to change the pads on a modern vehicle, you have to retract back um, the electronic parking brake. So this will allow you to do that. You also have BMS reset. So this will allow you to uh, replace a battery and register a new one. Very important so the batteries don't die when you put a new one in so your car doesn't overcharge it. You also have the throttle actuator relearn function. So that will allow your car to uh, idle properly when you you know, re replace the throttle or change some of the stuff in there. Of course, you have injector coding. So on BMWs, most BMWs, you have to code the injectors specific to the vehicles. It's like a compensation determination type of stuff. So you change the value based on what you see on the actual physical injector. You also have the DPF. So whenever you replace uh, the filter for uh, one of the diesel vehicles, I'm not very familiar with it, but basically you can reset that reminder and you have ABS bleeding. So that will perform the bleed on the braking system to restore ABS sensitivity and make sure that you have proper braking power whenever you uh, bleed the brake fluid. So yeah, those are all the special functions and obviously functionality will depend based on your vehicle. So do look that up to make sure it works on your specific vehicle if that's what you're buying it for. But to summarize this device, what can it do? Well, for under $200, I feel like it does a lot. It runs on Android 10, it has very good hardware, so it's quick. The graphing is kind of amazing. You can do eight different PADs in a single view, or you have eight different single graphs on the same screen. You also have all the information up at the top, as we saw earlier. You can also export all of the data to the CSV file and have live playback. You also have one-click updates, which is awesome. You don't have to plug this into a computer ever, basically. Those updates are free for the lifetime. I do like the Autovin, that was quick and I found my, my car fast. Five inch screen seems to be responsive and works well. The ergonomics are nice, very easy to hold and work, uh, work on and there's no things for dirt to go in and stuff like that. So it should be pretty easy to wipe off at the end of the day and keep it clean. Yeah, it has a large battery too, so that should be good. And I do like that it's charging from OBD2 port. You don't really have to plug it in ever because it just works from the car itself. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to show you before I finish this video is the report. So we didn't actually look at those, but yeah, we can look at the report that we just did. So we can click on that and it'll give us a full report of what we did and what was what were the values, the live data of the vehicle, everything. So you can share that by email, so you can send it by an email or you can print a PDF report. Very helpful if you actually work uh, 
you know, at a shop and you can also do live data playback. So the data we recorded earlier, there you go. We can play it back and it has 277 frames that it saved. Of course, there was not much changing, but yeah, if anything's changing, you can record it and then play it back. Also a file manager where all of the data is stored and the data view. So basically the same data that we saw earlier. Look at that. You can see all of it saved in here, very nicely presented. So yeah, that's impressive. So are there any negatives about the scanner that I can think of? Well, it can do things like active testing or bi-directional uh, functionality or do coding, but under $200, I would not expect it to do so, especially since it supports so many makes and models of different cars. On that note, let me know what you think of this scanner down below. If you'd like to see more videos from my channel, click right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.